Breaking news, the U.S. Supreme Court just conferred broad but not absolute immunity on Donald Trump for his actions in connection with January 6th. This is Democracy Docket. Mark, the Supreme Court just issued its blockbuster decision in Trump's immunity case. Can you explain what the court ruled and what was the split of the justices? Yeah, so this was a 6-3 split uh, between conservative and liberal justices. I know we'll come back to that. That is a bad thing for democracy. But what the conservative majority said is that presidents enjoy a presumption of immunity for all actions that fall within the outer perimeter of their official activity, and that only activity that they engage in that is not official uh, can be the subject of criminal prosecution. This puts in grave jeopardy much, if not all, of the criminal charges pending in the D.C. court uh, uh, involving January 6th, and the Supreme Court in continuing to delay and delay the final disposition of this case, kick the case back down to the trial court for further proceedings. So they remanded the case back down to the trial court. What exactly does that mean and what are they going to do in the trial court? Right. So what that means is that this case, which everyone needs to remember, has been on hold now for months. Right. Judge Chutkin, uh, the trial judge, had been moving this case along. There had been a trial date set originally for March of this year. Uh, that date obviously came and went. Uh, and it's been on hold as, as this immunity issue has bubbled up to the Supreme Court. And frankly, Sophie, at every level, uh, this very frivolous theory, this argument that was dismissed out of hand originally has gained more and more currency until today's ruling. Uh, and the Supreme Court uh, conservatives really scrambled the analysis, sent, said that the trial court, the ju Judge Chutkin, now needs to determine which portions of the charges against Donald Trump relate to his official actions, which portions relate to his, do not relate to his official actions, if it relates even to, and I quote, the outer perimeter of his official actions, then he is immune from prosecution. Those charges would need to be struck. And only the portions of his conduct that do not relate to uh, his uh, official activities uh, could be the subject of ongoing criminal prosecution. But Sophie, make no mistake, the game that Donald Trump has been playing from the beginning has been to delay, delay, delay. The courts have been witting or unwitting participants in that. And the Supreme Court today not just narrowed the scope of culpability and responsibility that presidents have for their criminal activity, but also gave Donald Trump more delay. So the Supreme Court said that presidents have immunity for official acts, but not for unofficial acts. Did their opinion actually define what is an official act versus not? So it gave examples of what official acts are. So gone from this indictment going forward are going to be any conversations between Donald Trump and the attorney general or the acting attorney general or anyone really, I suspect, in the in the federal government. Like those are clearly uh, going to be considered uh, official acts. Why? Because the Supreme Court said if the president is acting pursuant to the constitu his constitutional authority or a statute, that is an official act. Obviously, talking to the attorney general about the enforcement of the law falls in that category. Uh, the court said that the uh, the communications between Donald Trump and the vice president about certification needed to go back to uh, for remand and for further proceedings in the trial court. Though, honestly, Sophie, it is hard to see how the government is going to hold that burden up because, as the Supreme Court said, the certification of the election in Congress is an official act. And, you know, I think Donald Trump is probably uh, as wrongly decided as I think this case was. I think he's probably going to wind up on, uh, on the uh, winning that. The question that the Supreme Court held open is what about Donald Trump's, uh, uh, it, you know, interference in or communications about the state certifications? Because on that, what the Department of Justice has properly pointed out is that there is no role for the federal government in how Georgia counts ballots. There is no official role for the president of the United States in how Michigan certifies election results. So. You know, that is, I think, where most of the remand action is going to be. But make no mistake, this is a defeat for democracy. This was a bad day for the rule of law. And this was unfortunately a good day for Donald Trump's efforts to evade responsibility for his role in the violent insurrection on January 6th.
So we know that Donald Trump has ongoing criminal cases in Washington, D.C., Georgia, and Florida. How does the Supreme Court's decision today affect those cases and any future cases that could come against him? Can they proceed? What's going to happen? All right. So, you know, let's just start with the Trump position. Donald Trump's position is going to be, I've been vindicated. I'm right. This has all been a political prosecution. It's a witch hunt. It's weaponization of government, whatever you want to call it. And he's going to say that this requires all of those cases to be reevaluated under this standard. Okay, so that's that's going to be Donald Trump's legal position. Um, uh, but let's run through these one by one. In New York, I, I think it is hard to argue that any of the activity that Donald Trump engaged in um, with respect to Ms. Daniels um, qualified as an official act. Um, both because of the act, but also because of the timing of it. It took place well before he was even president. But again, he will, his legal team will say, look, the payment parts and the bookkeeping parts were while he was president and there needs to be a hearing. And that would, of course, delay things. But I think he'll lose that in New York. With respect to Georgia, you know, the Georgia case is kind of on hold while this HR issue between the, uh, whether the prosecutor and the special counsel were, had an inappropriate relationship, all that gets resolved. Um, but I do think, yes, there will have to be a hearing there to say whether or not the activities that he is charged with there qualify as official acts or not. So I think Georgia is going to be implicated by this, which brings us to Florida. You know, the Florida case, Judge uh, Cannon in Florida has sort of taken a different tact to giving Donald Trump effective immunity. She just doesn't decide anything. You know, she just like continues to have a pretrial hearing upon pretrial hearing. Um, but Lord knows if she's been holding pretrial hearings on everything else, she'll certainly hold pretrial hearings on this. Again, hard to see how it relates to his official activity since he was gone from the White House. But if there's one thing we've learned about that Florida case, you know, the judge is open for a lot of novel arguments, and a lot of novel hearings. So I would expect that those three cases, um, there will be hearings uh, with different degrees of success. Um, how much it 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 does away with the criminal charges in each of them, I think will be varied. I don't think it'll uh, uh, do away with all of the criminal charges against Donald Trump, but it's going to kick this can way down the road. We're no longer talking about a trial in 2024. We may not even be talking about trials in 2025. Um, this is a very bad decision for democracy. So you're saying it is safe to say that Donald Trump will not face accountability for January 6th before the election this year? Donald Trump will not face accountability for January 6th before the election uh, in 2024. He may not ever face accountability for his role in January 6th, because if he gets elected again, he is going to attack and try to defund the special counsel. If that doesn't work, he'll have them fired. It will be a scandal for a day or two until the media moves on. And I'm here to tell you that Donald Trump played the judicial system with the help of a lot of judges and got mostly what he wanted out of this, which was immunity by delay. This is a sad day for democracy. This is a day that will live in infamy for rule of law. And, you know, all I can say, Sophie, is that everyone who cares about free and fair elections and cares about the rule of law, you know, we just all need to double down and work harder. Mark, what does this decision mean for President Joe Biden and any future presidents? So the, I wrote an article for Democracy Docket a few weeks ago called The Asymmetry of Election Denialism. And we live in a day of asymmetry because let's be honest, Joe Biden is not going to use the power of the presidency uh, to try to overturn a free and fair election. Joe Biden is not going to use the power of the presidency uh, uh, to try to incite an insurrection in the nation's capital. Joe Biden is not going to use the presidency to conduct the kind of abuses we saw Donald Trump do regularly in which he has threatened to do by saying he wants to be dictator for a day and that his re-election will be, will be an election of retribution, right? So we have this asymmetry and it is important that people recognize that, which is why I wrote that piece for Democracy Docket. It is also why I hope everyone goes to the Democracy Docket website right now and checks out its coverage on this breaking news and also signs up for its free daily and weekly newsletters and considers becoming a premium subscriber. Mark, what does it say about the state of the Republican Party that their presumptive presidential nominee has been convicted of 34 felonies and may still be able to face prosecution for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election? It tells you that the Republican Party is desperate to protect this guy. I mean, look, the Republican Party has been covering for Donald Trump since Donald Trump became the nominee in 2016. 
I mean, and and their covering for him gets worse and worse. You know, they they prevented him from being impeached uh, or convicted. They now routinely disparage the courts. They routinely dismiss his his felony convictions. They act as if his uh, statements about wanting to be a dictator are normal. You know, they disparage anyone who is at all critical of of Donald Trump. They are they they have built a cult around MAGA and 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 Trumpism. What I what we had hoped for was that justices on the U.S. Supreme Court would resist joining that effort. And what we have seen through the last few opinions, this opinion involving immunity, the case involving uh, January 6th, some of the opinions of aiding Project 2025, is that the U.S. Supreme Court is also covering for Donald Trump. You know, it's amazing that we went 200 plus years without a president needing immunity from criminal prosecution. Time and time again, if you bet uh, uh, that the Republican establishment, including the legal establishment, would do the wrong thing, you were a very rich person. And if you thought they would uphold the rule of law and basic decency and norms, well, then you're wiped out. So that's what it tells you about the modern Republican Party. They are a bankrupt party, but they are also enjoying the success that comes with being a shameless party and a movement with powerful forces behind it. Justice Sonia Sotomayor wrote a dissent joined by Justice Kagan and Justice Jackson. She started with, today's decision to grant former presidents criminal immunity reshapes the institution of the presidency. It makes a mockery of the principle foundational to our constitution and system of government that no man is above the law. She ends her dissent by saying, with fear for our democracy, I dissent. Mark, what does it mean that a sitting Supreme Court justice says that a decision made by the court is bad for our democracy? Going into this case, Donald Trump said he could assassinate his political opponents when he was president. He could stage a coup. And people thought that that was hyperbole and over the line. It is time we start to take him literally and seriously, because today, a majority of the U.S. Supreme Court did just that. In fact, Donald Trump, if returned to the White House and in the Oval Office, assassinates his political opponents as part of a plan to uh, uh, to effectuate what he believes is federal law. If he stages a coup and cites a provision of the U.S. Constitution, he will, in fact, be immune from criminal prosecution. The dissent is correct, and I, too, fear for the future of our country. This was the final decision of the Supreme Court's term, and during this term, the court issued several blockbuster decisions, which you, Mark, have said were bad for democracy, including helping January 6th defendants, upending a 40-year-old precedent where for deferring to federal agencies, and upholding South Carolina's racially gerrymandered congressional map. What do you make of the Supreme Court's term and where the court is heading in general? Sophie, the Supreme Court has told us who they are. They have repeatedly showed us that they mean what they say. The same court that overturned Dobbs is the court that overturned, as you point out, another decades-long precedent uh, in uh, uh, re relying on agency expertise to, uh, for judges to give deference to, as opposed to judges just imposing their own, uh, their own views on things, uh, and, uh, and also uh, questioning the doctrine of racial gerrymandering. Right. So we have seen a term in which the Supreme Court has once again proven that it doesn't care about precedent, it doesn't care about public opinion. It's going to move in a decidedly conservative uh, arena. But I think the overall theme for this term is that if you are a January 6th defendant, if you are an election denier, if you are someone who believes that Donald Trump should be a dictator, you had a really good few days. I mean, over the course of the last few days, the U.S. Supreme Court has, has weakened independent federal agencies that would be a check on a new president, has uh, uh, cut back on criminal laws that, that would punish people who ransacked the U.S. Capitol to overturn a free and fair election, and now has effectively given Donald Trump near absolute immunity for, for official acts if he gets back into the White House. This is a conservative court that is doing the bidding of Donald Trump and the Project 2025 movement. Thank you for watching Democracy Docket. Please stay up to date on all of the news and information about this case and the others by subscribing to its free daily and weekly newsletters and consider becoming a paid premium member today.